Hey there my fellow designers and creatives, hope you're all doing well, this is Chetan here from Design Palette and I am back again today with another tutorial. And in this tutorial we're going to be learning something really interesting and really important and critical to a great and a fantastic logo design. We're going to be talking about logo grid construction or also called as gridding, if you guys haven't heard the term. It is primarily used to create a good amount of distance and consistency between the logo itself and the word mark or basically the text of the logo to make sure that it looks very symmetrical, looks very harmonious and looks very professional and clean. So without any further ado, let's get started. All right, now here I'm an illustrator and I've come up with four different concepts that I would like to show you on how to place the logo and the word mark. Uh, but before we get into that, let me show you what I'm actually talking about. So here I'm on Behance and these are a couple of projects that are basically logo designs. And if you can see this part over here on the top right corner, you can see you have some X values, we have some grids and we have some layouts and you know, just the way the icon and the word mark is placed. And here's another project where the same thing is happening. We have a 2x, we have an x, something, we have a lot of grids and lines and layouts that are going on. Similar over here as well and same over here as well. Now there are a lot of ways and various ways of doing the the gridding or the grid construction. There is no hard and fast rule or kind of a set rule as to make this. You're completely free to do whatever you want. If you guys want more information on uh, gridding, you can check out this website called as Issue, I-S-S-U-U, link in the description, where uh, basically all the great brands and their guidelines and how the big brands actually do their gridding. See, as you can see, we have Intel, we have NASA, uh, we have McDonald's, uh, a lot of great companies and how they do the gridding. If you have to check out, let's look at one pretty quick. Let's look at Intel for now. And as you can see, uh, there is a lot of information over here. Um, let me try to open up the gridding part. All right, so as you can see here, um, there's a simple grid that has been created. Uh, this is basically what gridding looks like. So I'm going to show you how to do that in Illustrator because I think that is where you have to do it actually. So for this purpose, I'm going to be using the Video Copilot logo. If you guys have not heard of Video Copilot, Video Copilot is an online website where you can learn After Effects and create amazing and fantastic motion graphics. It's by a guy called Andrew Kramer. An amazing guy, definitely check it out if you guys are interested in motion graphics, this is the place to learn it. And as you can see on the top right of his uh, website, you can see you can see the videocopilot.net logo and how it's placed, the, the size of the word mark, the size of the logo, looks pretty really good and really cool. So I'm going to be doing various variations of that, so uh, let's get started. So the first thing I have is an open blank document which is 1280 by 720 and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go ahead and copy all this for now. Oops. Uh, Ctrl G, copy and place it, all right? Okay, so right now I'm gonna go ahead and make the word video a single object, a single group, and the video cover a single group by pressing Ctrl G on my keyboard, and this is gonna be a single group. I'm just gonna put this away for the side and we can focus on this right now. Now the first thing you wanna do is you wanna take an element from the entire logo. You can take a single letter, you can take this object, which is this hexagon that's right over here, or basically any small element that kind of is in the shape of a square. Now, I wouldn't recommend using this kind of a wing as the basic element to determine the value of X. So I'm gonna press Control Shift G and I'm gonna be selecting this one. So this is basically the element that we're gonna be considering the value as X, all right? Now, before we get started, uh, we wanna go to Window and uh, actually View and make sure we have Snap to Pixel is turned off. Now, this might work for you in some cases, but if you if you are getting some problems, you can turn off this. All right, so this is the first thing. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, uh, let's actually go ahead and make a copy. So I'm holding on Alt or Option on my keyboard and holding down Shift and dragging this out. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and create a rectangle. All right, so I'm just gonna come over here and as you can see, you I have these purple lines that come. So if I go to Window and uh, so actually um, view and choose Smart Guides, uh, those are the purple lines. So I'm just going to click here once and I'm going to click here and there you go. So the size of this is 19 pixels. So I'm just going to go ahead and make the, oh, so the height is 86.896 pixels. So I'm just going to copy that and paste it. Okay. And so there we go. So there we go. We have the X value determined. 
So the X value is basically 86.896. Now you wanna make a couple of variations of this. So I'm gonna select this, hold on Alt and drag this out. And we're gonna make this 50%. So the width is going to get divided by two. So I'm just gonna go and choose uh, divided by two. All right, uh, I'm gonna make a copy of this and I'm gonna divide this by two, divide by two. So this becomes one fourth of this. So because we have three different um, sizes of the element over here. So I'm just gonna go and keep this over to the side. Okay, and uh, let's delete this. Now let's group this, Control G. And so the first thing you wanna do is go ahead and create kind of a bounding box over this entire thing. So I'm gonna go come over here and, uh, all right, that's pretty good. Just create a bounding box over the entire logo. Okay, uh, that looks uh, pretty good. And I'm gonna set this stroke to a black color stroke so we can see. All right, so here it is protruding a little bit. So I'm just gonna move this over to the side like so. And um, I think that is looking pretty good. Uh, let's drag this side out. Okay, so we have a really good bounding box over this entire thing. So the next thing is I want the word video and copilot to be mentioned over here. So this is where your creativity comes in and your kind of thought process and logical sense works over here. So I'm gonna be actually taking this one which is basically uh, the half of the X value and I'm gonna bring it, hold on Alt and bring it down so I make a copy. I'm gonna rotate it and I'm gonna place it somewhere over here so it intersects, all right? I'm gonna move this up as well so it intersects with this as well. And then what I wanna do is I'm gonna select the one which is this 25% one. Uh, hold on Alt, make a copy, and I'm gonna go rotate this. And I'm gonna make sure that this is exactly in the dead center. Okay, and there we go. So this is 50%, this is 50%, this is 25%. And now I'm gonna place the words video and copilot in these gaps. All right, so let's go and take the word video and I'm gonna place that right here. Okay, uh, another thing we wanna do is we wanna create a good distance between the logo and the word mark. So probably I'm gonna be using this one again. So I'm gonna hold on Alt and make a copy and we can extend this like so. Oops, uh, let's just extend this. All right, there we go. So now I'm gonna take this and place that right at the bottom uh, and make sure that it is touching the left edge. All right, that's pretty good. And now we're gonna make this pretty big. So let's just scale this up, hold down Shift on the keyboard and we can scale this up and make sure it kind of touches this top part. All right, there you go. That is looking pretty good. And let's do the same thing for the word copilot. So let's go bring that down and uh, make sure that it matches perfectly. Okay, uh, that is looking good. And then we are gonna go and scale this up pretty big and high, whoops, alrighty, okay. Let's scale it again. Okay, uh, we have to kind of move this up. Uh, all right, okay, I think uh, it, there's a little bit of gap, so let's just quickly scale this a bit more. All right, I think that should do the trick right now, and uh, there you go. Oh, it is overlapping a bit, so let's try to bring this down. Okay, I think this looks much better and yeah, it is overlapping a teeny tiny bit, but that's okay in my opinion. All right, so then we can go ahead and get rid of this and this and this. All right, and as you can see, this is what we have. I can get rid of the bounding box as well. Uh, maybe we don't need that right now, so I'm gonna delete that. All right, and now as you can see, uh, it looks pretty good. Now, one thing you wanna do is when you are making these grids, do not scale down the logo because right now, the value of this is 86.6 something, and this is also 86, but if I end up scaling this down, this is gonna change. It's not gonna be 86 anymore. So you wanna make sure that it is always at the same size. So let me just hold on Alt on my keyboard and drag this over and uh, we're gonna make another version. So let me just center this. And uh, I think it looks pretty good. Uh, it looks really nice. Let's actually move all these out, right? It's looking pretty good. Uh, the next version is, I think probably we're gonna do this version, okay? Now before we move on to the next version, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and create a rectangle, um, you know, covering the entire logo this time. Okay, uh, yes, that, that's look pretty good. And uh, I'm just gonna click on this button, which is gonna invert it. Okay, and that is looking pretty good right now. Now, one thing you wanna do is uh, let's take the X value over here, hold on Alt and make a copy. We wanna put one box over here, all right? And uh, let's uh, bring this down. We wanna put one box over here. Then we can select these two and move this over to this side. Okay, 
Now I think I'm gonna select all of this and press Control X, and uh, that's gonna invert the boxes. Um, we might, we can probably move this a bit up. All right, yes, we can move that up. We can move this down. Okay, uh, this one pixel down and move this one pixel up. Move this up. Okay, that's looking pretty good. And if you want, we can make a copy by pressing Control C, Control F, and we can create a box like so. We can copy that, bring this down, and let's do the same thing, Control C, Control F to copy and paste in place. And I wanna hold down Alt on my keyboard and hold down Shift and drag it over to the other side. All right, so this is basically how the logo is gonna be confined. And for example, why do I need to create this? So for example, we are creating some kind of a image where you have to put to the logo. This is the minimum distance they need to have from off the edges. So if I go ahead and let's try just, you know, quickly grouping this. Control G and let's say I'm, I'm going to place it at the bottom of the corner just like right here on the top you can see the distance over here and the distance over here we want to make sure that this x value or this bounding box is the minimum distance between the edges so what I'm trying to say is if I scale this down and let's bring it over to the side uh, this is where my logo is going to be now if I press Control shift G on my keyboard and let's just kind of delete these bounding boxes and see how they look all right, so this is the exact perfect placement of the logo. It looks really good right now, nice consistency and nice distance between the logos and the edges. All right, so I'm just gonna delete this and uh, let's get into the second version where I'm gonna be creating this type. So uh, let's bring this again. So hold down Alt on my keyboard and bring this over here and we can kind of center this right for now. Okay, so I'm gonna press Control Shift G to ungroup this and we're gonna take these two and bring that down. And the word Copilot is gonna be beside the word video this time. All right, and I'm gonna give us a little bit of space. All right, and uh, let's bring this to the center. Okay, looking good. Now, we wanna make the size of video also the same size as the X value, okay? So if I bring this over to the edge and uh, let's bring this X value over here. As you can see, the X value and the size of the text is exactly the same, so that is good. I'm gonna bring this up and we are gonna go and press Control G and I'm gonna center this. Now, how do we determine the distance between the logo? That's completely up to you. You can use the X value or you can use the uh, value, which is half of X. So I'm gonna bring this, uh, rotate this, and I'm gonna place this right over here. And I can move the word video copilot up so it matches. And we can go ahead and just quickly delete this. And uh, there you go. I'm gonna scale this down and keep it so. Right now, this is one way you could do, but since this logo is angled, it's not gonna pretty much suit this kind of a placement. So if you have a logo that fits very well with this, then you could definitely do that. Quickly to show you how the bounding box works, we can quickly do that right now. All right, and uh, let's uh, do one over here, okay? And uh, we're gonna need one over this entire thing. And we're gonna move this inside, okay? And now we can bring in our boxes, the X value, oops. Okay, then we can bring this down, select these two and move them over to the side. And uh, let's select these two, press Control X. And uh, there you go, this is the kind of placement you want for this, all right? Uh, the last version is gonna be this one, which I think is how most of the logos are presented. So uh, let's quickly grab this and make a copy by holding down Alt and we can bring this over here. Press Control Shift G to ungroup. I'm gonna select this and center this and probably bring this to the side, I guess. All right, now here the word video copilot again is gonna be side by side. And uh, I think, yes, and let's give it a little bit of space over here. I'm gonna select all this. I'm gonna select the word video and copilot, press Control G to group them. And we can bring this to the center as well again. And you can quickly determine the space. This time probably we want to use the X value itself. So I'm just gonna drag this and bring this over here, okay. Uh, make sure that this is in the center, okay? And we can take the word video and copilot and drag it out so it kind of meets the edge and you can delete this if you want. And uh, I think that is looking pretty good. Now, if you scale this, let's see how that looks. Press Control G. Yeah, maybe the distance is too much so we can reduce it. So uh, let's uh, bring in this one actually. And as you can see, the smart guides show up. So I can take the word video and push that in, delete this. And then let's go ahead and scale this by pressing Control G and scaling this down. 
And I think this looks like a much better presentation. So there are tons of ways of doing this. Here is another one that I created. Um, this is a, so this is the half of the X value and this is 25% of the X value. All right. And uh, that is pretty much it on how to grid your logos. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it and hope you guys learned something new. Let me know in the comment sections down below if you have any questions or requests or any feedback. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and leave a like and I'll definitely see you guys in my next video. So till then, take care and bye-bye.